There's a famous quote in marketing, which is, I know I'm wasting 50% of my marketing spend. The problem is I don't know which 50%. I think the challenge for all of us in advertising with digital marketing is, does it sell a ticket? How can online engagement translate into more ticket sales? So how do posters translate to more ticket sales? How do postcards? 45 cents of every dollar in the U.S. is now going to digital marketing. It's creating chatter and buzz, but does it sell a ticket? My name is Liesl Barrel, and I'm the Senior Business Development Manager at Unbounce, which is a startup for marketers. I'm Judy Robertson. My job is in Vancouver, where I work for the regional government, and I administer an online arts and culture website called Max Guide. My name is Barry Averich. I've been in marketing for 30 years. I own an ad agency called BTA. My name is Chalo Barueta, and I'm the executive director and co-founder of You for Change. My name is Sue Edworthy. I run Sue Edworthy Arts Planning. I specialize in marketing communications and planning for your art. My name is Warren Wolanski. I run a company called Plank. And the best way to describe it is we're a digital agency. The question is, is there a difference between digital marketing and marketing? It's more democratic. Whereas, you know, print can be really expensive. Can you imagine someone just saying, I just want to try something on 500,000 postcards? When you look at traditional channels, one of the things that's been the hardest for marketers to do is, is to find things that are really measurable. One of the things that digital marketing has in its favor, when you do it properly, you can actually measure every single little action. And that is an absolutely massive benefit. In marketing of any kind, the spray and pray method doesn't work. Right, where you just throw stuff out and you hope it comes. It's never worked. About 75% of arts and nonprofit organizations do not have a formal digital marketing strategy. It's brilliant if they're considering a digital marketing plan because that's probably the biggest mistake that people make is that they don't have a plan. If you're starting from ground zero with a digital marketing strategy, there are some really important pieces that you have to cover. And it's easy. I find that a lot of arts marketers I work with really want to get into tactics. They really want to say, I want to do a Facebook contest. Instead of standing back and saying, what's the goal I want to achieve? And from knowing that, what's going to be the best route, route to go about to achieve that goal? Where does your audience already exist? Because if you're doing a campaign, is it for a specific show? Is it for a season? Is it a high I'm just getting started? You really need to figure out what your event is, who you want there, and how are you going to get them there? So you've got to start marketing maybe through the schools or you market at the community centers and those kinds of things. And, and not getting too broad, really target and see. You know, I mean, it's not going to happen all at once. When you look at a digital strategy, you want to look at how am I reaching sponsors? How am I reaching artists? How am I reaching corporate groups that buy like big packages or schools, for example? I have a very good friend in Calgary who's a, an artist, a, a visual artist. And she was getting ready to do an exhibition in Edmonton. And the exhibition was based on a series of paintings that she did around her hometown, which is the town of Vegreville, just outside of Edmonton. So to kind of create some buzz around the exhibition coming up, she created a Facebook page specifically, you know, have you lived in Vegreville or did you live in Vegreville? And encourage people to send photos into the website. Um, in particular, if there are people in the photo that you didn't know and, you know, maybe it was your mom with somebody, did anybody know who that person was? and really created this whole culture you know, of, of people around, people who'd grown up there, lived there at some point in their lives, and um, then from there marketed her exhibition that was coming up, and it was all memories of, of Vegreville, and uh, ended up having a very successful exhibition in Edmonton, and sold a lot of paintings, and she said there was no doubt that it was through Facebook. I remember a dance company, they had their event up, and of course, uh, on Facebook and it shows who's attending, right? And they posted a note saying, check out who's attending, see if you have any friends, pull together five of them, we'll give you guys a discount, group, right? Clever Boots, that's a smart little thing, right? Because you don't realize that you know five other people attending, now you can get a group, right? I think that there's probably even digital marketing tools that people don't even realize they are using. You know, people probably don't think of email as digital marketing, but it is. You know, there's the Instagram, if you, you know, which is great for artists or for like promoting stuff like Culture Days is a fantastic good thing because you can instantly send a photo of somewhere where you are. There isn't one digital marketing means, right, that um, it, it, you know, to, to use a, you know, a well overused term, it's tools in a toolbox and digital marketing is a big toolbox and there's different tools within that. 
One thing that's super, super lucky for all arts marketers out there is there's a lot of avenues they can explore. And the challenge there is you've got a plethora of choice and you have to start making decisions about where to invest your time and resources. Because if there's one thing I know about arts marketers is that you don't have time and you don't have budget. There are so many avenues where you could reach out to people where you hear about 20 different social networks or having a website and who do you talk to and where do you go. So my advice is always just try to keep it simple. If you find that there's one place that you can communicate best, if it's Twitter or if it's Facebook or if it's posting photos on Instagram that gets people excited about what you do because you're a great photographer, my attitude would be to focus as much as possible rather than spread yourself thin because that's what can be intimidating. And then also the reality is there's only so many hours in a day and I know that creative people want to create. You know, even if you have a table at a, at, a, at a craft fair, the whole idea is you have to start somewhere by letting people know that you're there. And even if it's an hour a day or half an hour a day, carve it off, leave it aside, and that should be where you invest your time doing digital marketing.